This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm the O2 Indigo for Ultimate Boxer. We've just seen Shikan Pitters win the Ultimate Boxer. Your reaction to that, Dave? Yeah, I thought I thought he's a worthy winner. Um, I'd never seen him box before, um, but after the first minute of his quarterfinal, mm. I turned around and I said, "This kid's going to win it." And he, you know, proved me right. He's got all the tools. He's a very good boxer. He's very, very good. Sharp. Seems though he's a heavy-handed. He can crack. Um, but also, um, he's got a brain on him. Um, all he's lacking is experience. So I think, mm. I think, you know, just my opinion. You know, it's only my opinion. But I think for a year, they should um, spend not rushing him, take him around the gyms. We've got some great. This kid's six foot six, and he and he makes twelve seven. Mm. <laughs> you know, he's got some assets about him. But what he needs is experience sparring. We've got some really good light heavyweights in this country. Get into with Joe Gallagher. Go up and spar um, Callum Johnson, Jose Burton, you know, even get 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 some rounds with Callum Smith. Get sparring with uh, Boatze, Anthony Yard, Buglione. Buglione. Got a good list there they can get rounds from, pick brains, just soak up the experience. And in twelve months time, John Pegg and, and, and the team at Eastside, they've got a, they've got a great, great talent, you know. Um fighting wise, keep them at keep them at English level. Um, domestic level, you know, um, and and then let him off the leash when he's when mm. he's soaked up that experience. And how did it go? Is it tournament wise? Yeah, it was exciting, weren't it? Mm. Listen, Ultimate Boxer, it's the same as any sort of three round tournament. You just want excitement. Mm. You're not bothered about. You don't I come here to look at and um, look for skills and, and and things like that. I want a bit of excitement, you know. Um, and we got that. How many knockdowns did we get? Loads. I've never been to a show that's had as many as this knockdowns. Hmm. You know, in just an handful of fights, really. Um, so I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. It was good fun. Very fan friendly. Yeah. Um, right. A few things I want to ask you. Um, Tony's last day at your gym. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's been a. It's been a great ride. It's been a. Uh, it's an end of a of a really really good era. Um, you know, uh, so I've seen him pack his bags and, and leaving, and knowing that he's not going to come back. Mm. Um, it's yeah, it was it was a, a bit emotional, yeah. Mm. Obviously, a huge task ahead of him. Mm. I think you and Tony would be the first to admit that. Mm. Make me the case that Tony comes out on top. <laughs> um, when when you watch snippets of Usyk. Mm. <laughs> how do you beat that when you watch the Gassier fight fucking hell how do you beat that but when you watch countless hours of full fights minute after minute after minute not highlight reels not bits of this fight not bits of that fight full fights you go through amateurs WSB um, certain fights in the pros He's very, very good. I'm not denying that. But he gets it. And he has lost rounds. So he can lose rounds. And if he can get hit, he can get beat. The job is for... You look at these fighters. So I look at breeders. Mm. Um, especially the first five, six rounds for the breeders fight. Breeders is their experience cost him that fight. Because he's winning that fight. Um, do I think that Breedis is a better fighter than Bellew? That's a matter of opinion. I don't think he is. Breedis is also, he was finding him with right hands. He was finding him with left hooks. Breedis is short. Because when Breedis came into the change rooms after we won, um, uh, won the WBC title at Goodison, mm. I'd never met Breedis before. And I saw him and I thought, who's that? And he was just, it was this small geezer that stood up to talking to Tony and it was Breedis um, so if Breedis can reach him Tony's going to reach him uh, there are things that Tony Bellew can do in the ring that you don't appreciate outside the ring you know um, I'm not saying he's you know, he's the same sort of fight or anything like that but in, in ways that like Bernard Hopkins you wouldn't know which Bernard Hopkins was going to turn up in which sort of style what he was going to do um, he was very good at um, upsetting the other fighters' rhythm. The most important thing in this fight is that Tony Bellew upsets 
you, you say it's rhythm because it's a rhythm fighter and everything comes off his rhythm um, so there are things that he's going to be doing to implement that and to, to offset that um, and he can punch I'm not gonna ta- I don't. I'm not, I'm, I feel like I'm skirting around it, but I'm not going to be saying to you, "Oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that." Of course, of course. But it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It doesn't matter if people sit here watching this and say, "Color talking bullshit." Your boy's <laughs> going to get battered. Blow. I've heard it all before. I've heard it all before. But genuinely, you know. So it doesn't matter whether you believe me or not. What matters is that we believe. We believe. You know. Um, Tony Valley really believes. You know, I really believe. It's it's a it's a hell of a fight. It, mm. It's it's a such a difficult fight. fight. It's a such yeah, it, it's such a difficult fight. Um, but that's what makes it. I think I don't know if that's what. I don't know if that's what makes it a little bit more special for us in the fact that it's almost like people see it as Mission Impossible. Um, and it's the one to go out on, mm. and it's like, well, you can, you can empty the tank in this one, you know, whichever way the fight goes, however it's panning. What you got to understand is that Belly can change, he can adapt in fights as well. He can, he can box going forwards, he can box going back. You know, we can, we can change things up, and he may have to do that in this fight. Um, but it's his last fight, so leave it on the ring. You know. It, He's never going to get another chance of, of fighting for the undisputed championship of the world. Mm. So um, he will do everything in his power to beat Usyk. Mm. And one thing about Bellew, it's just one of these kids that just doesn't matter what anyone thinks. It doesn't matter if somebody's got this, this, this over him. He 100% believes that he'll beat you. Mm. And that's a massive, massive tool in this fight. It's mm. a massive tool in this fight because it allows you to unlock what you need in you physically in order to carry out the job. Because if I ask him to do this, 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 but he doesn't really believe he can do it, then that puts a break on you and, and you don't do it. You, you just don't do it. But if you believe in it, you go with it. Mm. Now, we caught up with Johnny Nelson yesterday at the White Jizora press conference okay. and he said that Bellew is technically better than Uzik. Okay. What do you make of that comment? I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. Pe- right, okay. Um, <laughs> Usyk's very, very fast. He's got such high energy. He's, he throws a million punches. Um, But if you strip away the energy and the speed, like the the volume, does he is he is he technically fantastic? No, he's technically good, but he's not technically fantastic. But it's in a different sort of style. He's very good amateur style, very very good. You know, he's got that great amateur style, but it's just that he can he's got that volume and he can go round after round after round after round. Um, Bellew can adapt. Um, he's shown that he can adapt. He's, he's more. He's, he's a bit more more cunning. But because he doesn't throw millions and millions of punches or do it in a certain way that Usyk does it, then people just think, oh, Usyk's ten times better technically. But when you're talking about punching technique and an and actual technique of boxing, um, I think it's very, very, very evenly matched. But Bellew's more. Um, more adaptable. Well, well he's got, uh, for me, um, he can do more more things. Mm. Okay, moving on. Um, obviously, it was announced that White Chisora 2 is happening. Mm. First one was a cracker. Mm. What was your reaction when it was announced that David Hay will be <laughs> linking up with Derek Chisora? Um, I thought, what? <laughs> eh? um, how's that happened? I, thought, I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But regardless, the fight's been made. Mm. So David's doing a good job. You know, I, I know, however close it was, we was in Chicago and I had Dylan on the phone to Tony and then we had Derek on the phone to Tony. Tony was trying to get a fight made from me. He didn't manage any of them. It's just, you know, trying to help both, mm. both guys. Um, and the fight was very, very close. 
Um, so Davies managed to get it over the line and we've, we've, we've got a hell of a fight because I was ringside for the first fight and genuinely, forget about skills and, and stuff like that, that is the best, for excitement and drama, the best heavyweight fight I've been at ringside for. It was just nuts. It was just nuts. It was, yeah. You know, it was just crazy. Um, and so as a fan, I want to see the rematch. But I like them both. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to say, you know, I, I see them both as friends. You know, Dillian White, when my little boy was in a hospital um, with meningitis, he sent me messages. He was, he was messaging me to see how my little boy was. And then a few weeks later, how's the how's he doing? Blah blah blah. Mate, for a, you know, it, it, it gets a bad rap sometimes. Mm-hmm. He's a, you know, he's a, yeah, a bit intimidating, things like that. For him to do that, you know, that meant a lot. That did, and that that tells you about what a man's about. Mm. You know, and I've 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 got on with him. I've got on with him for a long time. But that for me, that is something that's 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 special. That is, you didn't have to do that. Um, and and Del Boy Del Boy's been a friend friend of ours. You know, I've got to know him through uh, through Tony very well, and and he's been a friend for a long time now. Um, so yeah, I I don't want to see them fight each other because you know one man's got to well really one man's gonna lose. Um, but you know I'm, as a fan I want to see it. So I'm just gonna sit on that fence, <laughs> sit back and and like I did the first fight. Enjoy a enjoy a great fight because it's going to be a great fight. Has to be. Yeah, it has to be. Those two personalities, those two, you know, it's going to be a great fight. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, let me ask you this then: the winner. Yeah. Can they beat Anthony Joshua? Um. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't like to see Del Boy fight Anthony Joshua. Af- my honest feeling was. After the Takam fight, I was sat watching the Takam fight. I knew what he was doing. He was chipping away at the body. He was weakening the body, but he was taking a lot of shots. He was taking a lot of shots. And Dell's at that age now where you don't want to be taking a lot of shots. Um, and then he landed that haymaker and job done. Fantastic. I would have loved to see Dell walk away then. I know I knew it was never going to happen, mm. but I would love to see him walk away then because he's now he's taking a lot of shots. Go back years, he's took shots. David A. off of Vitaly Klitschko, you know, he's a warrior. He's an absolute warrior. Um, so I wouldn't want to see him fight Anthony Joshua. Dylan White is improving. Is improving, and that fight between him and AJ is always going to have that bit of beef. I know there's a lot more respect now, and they, they, they're getting a lot more now because mm. they've got they've got respect for each other. But it's always going to have that little bit of needle. Once they get in the ring and they're swapping blows, the balls come out. I mean, I like to say that anymore. I don't of course, like that's how I felt. Yeah, I know, but um, the, the guts come out. <laughs> you know, you know what the um, how things are going at the moment. You know, how to it. Set things out. I think. Um, so um, the guts come out and the macho comes out in them and we'll uh, we'll see what happens we'll mm. see what happens but yes he does have a chance but I think AJ is just getting better each fight that's the thing about that fight AJ and Dylan is always going to be a great fight but they're both getting better they are both getting better um, more rounded as fighters so again it's you know it, it's always going to be a good fight to watch. Okay, just the last one I want to ask you about. Um, negotiations between Brook and Khan apparently moving forward, but okay. Khan wants a rehydration clause. Man, fuck it now. <laughs> Does that not tell you that he doesn't think it can beat Kel Brook? Because you want to put every, drag him down to 147. Everyone knows he's going to be weaker at 147. Kel says, right. Fuck it, I'm doing it at 147. It comes down to 147, agrees to that. Then he says, I want to put a £10 close because you can't put too much weight on mm-hmm. after. Mate, you either think you can beat him or not. He obviously doesn't think you can beat him. He obviously doesn't think you can beat him because otherwise... It, and, I, and, I, and I get that he's worried about getting beat and having to face all his fans and his friends and stuff like that. I understand that because that's because this fight for both, both men, because there's been such bad blood and amongst each other's followers... Both men are going to be worrying, thinking, I can't show my face if I get beat by this guy. But come on, that's that's basically telling everybody else on outside 
you don't think you come everybody that I've spoke to has said the same thing everybody it's not just me I've all said the same thing it's a joke that just shows you that he don't want the fight or he wants him that depleted that it takes away any chance for him knocking him out and he can just go out there and beat a shell you can't you can't do that you can't do that in that fight it's not for the IBF title you know it's it's a, it's a in essence it's going to be a non-title fight unless they get a intercontinental international sort of strap or a mm. silver or something like that but it's a non-title fight really and it's a big domestic showdown that's been bubbling for years it's gone off the boil and you've got two fighters there that just fight each other just just get it done Kell said he's willing to go back down to 147 that's a big statement that's a big give giveaway in itself because that's going to kill him and and uh, Khan's been fantastic he's had a great career he's achieved so much he's been a brilliant exi- he's an exciting fighter his last fight was exciting mm. exciting against a guy that he shouldn't have been excited against mm. but it was exciting and I, I, th- I think both of them are past the best just get it done but don't he's he's making himself look bad by asking for that £10 rehydration clause. It's making itself look bad for it. Because that is just basically saying, that's putting a big red light saying, I don't think I can win. I want to give myself every chance of, of, of winning. You know? He, it is what it is, but um, it's my opinion. Probably wrong. I'm going to get slated for it. But it's, it's what I think. And it's what a lot of people have said to me as well. You know? Okay. Um, just get the fight done, man. Yeah. It's, it's like... Um, Everybody wants to see it. Everybody wanted to see it. And now people are saying they're not bothered. But if the fight got signed tomorrow, everybody would be all over it. They'd say, oh, I'm not watching it. Pass, blah, 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 blah. They blah, would. Blah. <laughs> but when it comes to fight night, yeah. everybody want to watch it. Because you want to see. Mm, would would Khan outbox him? Would Kel knock him out? You'd want to see it. you want to see who, who actually wins it. You know? mm. It's just unfortunate that it's not at the peaks. The more that it gets delayed, the worse it's going to be. All right, David. Appreciate your time. It's late. Listen, it best of luck in Manchester. Thank you. God, it is late. What's Jesus. the time? One? Five past one. Fucking hell. Listen, best of luck, Manchester. Um, yeah. Anything you want to add on IFL? No, I just want to say um, thanks for the support. Um, media, uh, fans, social media. Thanks for the support with... Um, with Tony in the build up to this it's been phenomenal it's been brilliant mm. it really has mm. uh, obviously you have, you have people that want to see him get smashed and are looking forward to seeing him getting smashed um, but that makes it interesting because it's you know it, that's boxing that's what, that's what we're here for but for the support thank you very much um, November 10th tune in because whether you love him or you hate him it's your last chance to see him either get smashed to bits or pull off a great win on that note, we'll end there. Thank you very much, Dave Forward. <laughs>